order, the regular meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees. It is about 7 p.m. on Wednesday, January 16th, 2019. Diane, <coughs> would you please take the roll? Karen. Here. Carolyn. Here. Dennis. Here. Diane. Here. Patty. Here. Linda. Here. Tim. Here. All right. Uh, please rise to the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, before I call for a motion, I have a, regarding the minutes, I have a question about the minutes. It looks like we have a new version at our place here. Is that correct? Is this a new version of the minutes? Tim caught an error that we were putting the wrong version of the Discovery's report on the previous I didn't notice. You thought it. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, we had mistakenly put the previous month's version of Tim's Trader's report in this month's minutes. So oh. that was the change. And then Tim also made a suggestion for a change, and we thought as long as we were changing, we'd do both at once, but the, Tim's suggestion is in bold there. Right. I so the one is just correcting an error, and the other is something for the board to decide if they go along with the change. So then this is no one's right? The, the one that was with our original packet? Okay. Yes. This is no, the revised copy is uh, in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the changes are in bold. All right, if everyone wants to take just a minute to look that over since they are different than when we got in our packet. Do I have a motion to approve the corrected minutes of the regular board meeting of December 19th, 2018? So motion. A second? Second. Any discussion or corrections? I have one. It is on page. Oh, at the one from home, yeah. yeah. This at is the first the, one. This is the, see if that same thing as I did one. I know, I guess you'll have to give me time to get it all straightened out. I wish we could just take a few seconds more and I'll compare them. Wait, I have uh, also something. Okay. I think there's a date wrong. And where, where are you looking at, Diane? Oh, boy. Okay. I mean, if you want to look executive at Executive session. Action following executive session. Hmm. Action following okay. executive session. The um, trustee Rosansky moved the trustees approve the closed session minutes. Shouldn't it be January 30th? Minutes, not 13th. Uh, usually, I mean, usually our meetings are in the middle of the month, so mm -hmm. it seems like it would be unlikely. Then be something was wrong. I don't know. The other sheet. Okay. Hold oh, it. Where is it on here? This is my original one. On this okay. one, it says January thirteenth, May twentieth, which is May twentieth, yeah, March sixteenth. Because it's it's the a closed session minutes. We don't have them, do we? No, oh, we don't have them in front of us right now. No. Okay. But the dates match the dates here from the ones that we had yes, given they, to us. Yes, I know. I see that. But the original, I thought, was wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. It, are you finished? I'm sorry. Right. Diane, okay. were, were you done making uh, comments um, about Yes, okay. because I don't have a closed session in minutes to verify that they well, I can uh, verify it. I, if I okay. can even count if you want, but I can go get the minutes. Well, even that sheet that said what the minutes were without the minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I can check on it later. And if it's yeah. the 30th, I'll just change it in okay. the original minutes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Carolyn? Um, yes. Okay, so it appears there aren't any page numbers on the revision. So the category then that it falls under is discussion on the organization of the director's report. Was page six, which is the second to the last page, maybe that's where it is now. Yes, right. it's still second to the last page. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is yes. the, the end of the last sentence. It says, um, Trustee Derblick would prefer the report to focus on the director's activities. And the department reports, um, that's where it's incorrect. Uh, what I said was department reports also to be on the website as monthly highlights. So I would just like you to change those last few words to so that. Do you want uh, uh, monthly highlights added? Is that what you're saying? Um, I want um, also be on the department reports. And then after that, it would say also be on the website as monthly highlights. So yeah, as monthly highlights. Too. Also, no, I'm not, see, it sounds like I'm asking to take it out of the director's report, which I'm not. I'm asking that we also place the department reports on the website as monthly highlights. So just... So you wanted to say to also be on the website as monthly highlights? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, would the movement and seconder uh, accept that modification? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other corrections? Um, two minutes, uh, December 19, 2018. Right. Then, uh, would you please do a roll call, Diane? Okay, Karen. Uh, and again, this is a motion to approve the minutes as just corrected. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Daddy? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, all right. I see that we have um, a request for public comment. And first thing I see here is Mr. Steve Doherty. Would, would you like to come up and make sure. your comments over here? And I say that because the camera pointed yeah. this way. If you want to step over this way. You taught me that last time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Because uh, not every one of you were here last time. Uh, my name is Steve Doherty. I live here now for about 45 years. I vote all the time. So, uh, Good chance I'm partly responsible for you guys being where you sit. Anyway, I'm happy to be here and happy and interested in this uh, library as you are. Uh, what I wanted to uh, talk to you about tonight was uh, is public comments. Uh, the board has the public to come here, sit here, you make our comments, ask our questions, and you don't answer. You say, well, we don't respond to public comments. <clears throat> well, to me, personally, that's a little bit disrespectful. I'm a citizen of this city, lived here for a long time, vote, interested in you, as, as you are, and I come here to ask a question, and I get no answer. Well, I looked online, and I looked at previous minutes, and whoever takes notes really does a good job, uh, uh, and basically states uh, what public com comments were made, and what questions were, answer or what questions were asked. No comment from you. No answers from you. So, it's kind of like, whose policy is this? Is this a written policy? It is a written policy. Well, at least I got a shake of a head here. <laughs> um, That's an improvement. Not yeah. actually. We'll be discussing that later, um, and maybe all the details that do come out will be helpful. Um, there are some comments, but it doesn't state that we are not 
to talk to you. Generally, it says we don't respond. Yeah, but I, I don't understand that at, at all. Uh, when I worked, I was responsible for what I did, and the information I provided, I had to back it up. I was in regulatory compliance, and believe me, I was always challenged, just as sometimes you are. But I was always ready and prepared to answer those questions in public, in a meeting setting, and immediately. So I'm not used to this, thank you for your, I'm sure you're going to say thank you for your comment, <laughs> and, and, and send me away. Uh, again, you know, I'd like to close this out because uh, uh, I basically feel that my comments here have no value to you because of your response, which is no comment. I would like to make a suggestion that if you discuss this, that you agree to answer questions that have a yes and no answer to do so. If I need to make an appointment with the director to discuss this, let me know that but at least give me some kind of an idea on how I'm going to get an answer to one of my questions that you do not want to respond to. So please re reconsider your policy. My views are important. I respect yours, respect mine. I would like more, I'm sorry, I would like to make one more comment. Based on what I've heard from this committee last week, and based on discussions that I've had with fellow citizens of Niles, there have been some reports made, some letters written to newspapers, and some comments made about these reports, the comments being that these reports were inaccurate. I'm going to leave with a question, and that is, have you ever fixed them? Or you, do you stand by those reports that went out again? Because I'm going to say something about reports. I've been in the facility business for 40 plus years. And reports, reports are truth or what you want them to be or want them to say. Sorry, I didn't realize what's the time. Okay? Alright, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Dory and I say thank you for your comments. Uh, and, and that we do uh, value what you have to say. And uh, you certainly can contact our director, uh, and she can answer various questions that you might have. And, and I'll just say one thing why it's not appropriate for us to answer questions, because we seven members can only act as a bar court. If any one of us speaks out, it's just an opinion from that individual. So we can only act as a board. Um, but we give direction to our director. And she can answer most questions. Should I direct talking. my questions to her then? Uh, yes, but I would, I'd suggest you can do that during business hours, and she'll be happy to talk to you then about any matters you might want to discuss. Okay. okay. So, bottom line, uh, public comments. Public well, comment is public well, it doesn't comment. Doesn't matter much here. No, I, I don't think that's correct. It's public comment, not public questioning. So. But isn't um, it not on the record then? When did, did you want to speak to Oh, no, go okay. ahead. Right. I'll just tell him. <laughs> okay, all right. Thanks, sorry. Are there any other requests for public comment? Okay. All right. Uh, then we'll move on to the next item, which is the treasurer's report. Okay, December is the sixth month. We are currently 50% of the way through our budget. And again, we are right in line with uh, budget expectations. 
So there are uh, no surprises uh, that I am pointing out. Page nine, revenues are online expectations, salaries are on budget. Page 10, um, materials often run a little higher than budget, you know, due to our subscription-based costs, which we've discussed before. But our operating expenses are at 42%, uh, which is well under budget. Uh, page 11, 39% again, general and admin is well under budget. Uh, I have no items of note on page 12. And page 13 is basically the same as every other month, under budget due to workers' compensation. Uh, and the only item I really do want to note is uh, on page 18 of our bank register report, uh, we do have a payment that we'll be voting on as well, but there's a payment to uh, the C and Chitelli heating and piping for $116,000 uh, from our special reserve equipment budget line item. We mm -hmm. approved a chiller replacement, mm -hmm. and the total bid for that was $147,160, so we will have another payment of $31,160 for the completion of that project. And that's it for my report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions about the treasurer's report? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, then we will move on to the next agenda. Um, I'll now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $183,455.62, payroll expenses of $278,383.26, and special reserve expenses, as just mentioned by Tim, of $116,000 for a total monthly expense $577,848.88. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion or questions? All right, Diane, would you take the roll? Karen. Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, next on the agenda is the director's report. Um, <clears throat> Susan? All right, well, I'm going to start by passing around some um, written notes that I have gotten. One is a thank you card that we got from the New Yorker discussion group, and they also enclosed, I believe it was $120 as a cash donation to the library. That was very nice. And then I haven't passed around the children's comments that they have a, a writing table downstairs, and there are some cute ones, so I'm just going to pass those up to you. You would like to take a quick look? And I am also going to pass out copies of the program booklet of Coming Together in Niles Township, as you can see from the Niles Journal that we had the press conference last week. And um, there are a lot of wonderful programs listed in here. I highly encourage you to take a look and see if there's some that you'd like to attend. Um, they run all the way through late March into early April. So I think. Um, we have a staff member here who has worked together with another Polish person to be the lead person on this project representing the Polish community. And they pulled together a lot of um, really fun sounding events. And they just are. May I have your attention, please? May Nora Day please come to the Patient Services Desk? Nora Day please come to the Patient Services Desk? Uh, they are just very excited to be sharing their culture with the other cultures. And this is the 10th anniversary of coming together. So they're very excited that it is landing on the 10th anniversary. So thank you. Uh, I just wanted to mention in passing that we have our staff day coming up on Friday. We have um, a couple of good speakers coming in. We have uh, one major speaker in the morning, and then we have short sessions in the afternoon. We have some behind the scenes tours, and so people will choose small groups to uh, attend. One of them is going to be one of the speakers that's coming in is talking about the teen brain. Because uh, as we have increased numbers of teens in the library, it is causing a little bit of friction with the grown-up brains in the library. Mm -hmm. As you have seen in the patron comments from time to time, they, uh, the teens are just crazy about our new teen librarian, and they love our other teen librarian too, and so there are a lot of them. And so we're going to be... Uh, just what do you say, Approximately. Um, you know, it's a... a 
varies day to day, but she might have 15, 20 kids in teen underground these days, which is a lot yeah. of kids. Yeah, but that's not that big of a space. No, it's not that big of a space. And unfortunately, it disturbs people in two directions, because it disturbs the people outside the glass, and it disturbs the people above them sure. on the second floor. So, um, so we're talking uh, just about how teens are different, what are the best ways of interacting with them. I'm sure Linda could give that speech yourself. <laughs> good luck. Experience. I'm like, okay, what would I do? <laughs> yeah. So I think that would be a good experience. So having everybody attend that one, and then they have their choice of the other short, uh, short programs that they can do. Um, we did get this donation is a donation that we got. We also got a donation just this week, so it's not in your packet yet, um, from somebody named Ira Graham who is one of the vets who did an oral history, and this is his second year donating to the library. Mm -hmm. He always does it, Care of Neil O'Shea. And of course, we thank yes. him um, And then the other thing I wanted to mention to you is that there is, I think we're here. Um, there is a trustee workshop that is, uh, it's not on your calendar yet, because I just spotted it today, but it is coming up on March 16th in Oak Brook. It is from the uh, Illinois Library Association, and it is a full day of trustee education. So you might want to consider. It's a Saturday this time. Okay. So, you know, if you want e-working trustees to have a chance to attend. So is there, this, I'm sorry, is there like a specific topic? or? An, uh, it's um, on here. It, it gives you the whole agenda and what kind of topics are being covered. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, March 16th? March 16th. Mm -hmm. In Oak Brook. Where do we see the agenda? There should be a copy for each of you. And that is all I have for you. Unless um, you have some questions. Oh, and, and just once again, please do let me know as soon as possible if you want to attend the President's Day Legislative Breakfast. Yeah, I think I would like to attend. Thank you. you know, and um, I think I would like to attend this library forum also on March 16th. Mm -hmm. I was going to have an answer for you, but I, unfortunately, uh, there's ships in the night, my daughter and I, so I don't know if she's got some place for the darlings to go or not for a fun step. So until I know for sure, I can't give an answer. Um, I'm sorry, Susan. Um, you said you have a staff day coming up. And I've seen that mentioned in Chapter 1 and also on the, the sign up front. Social media, we call the schools, we call okay, the buses, good. we All just right. make sure that everybody... Yeah, I just don't want people to yes, make a trip there yes, and yes. be disappointed. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. great. Uh, any other questions or comments regarding the director's report? Thank you. Oh, I had a question mm -hmm. under marketing notes um, regarding Chapter 1. Where, where are you looking, sir? Oh, sorry, page 35. Mm -hmm. um, and it mentions in here that um, I met with the postmaster at the Niles Post Office to discuss the mailing issue with Chapter 1's apartments and condos. I provided a list of carrier routes where we've received feedback from patrons not receiving this newsletter copy. I didn't know we were getting responses about not receiving Chapter 1. So, um, has have you put something on the website to generate this, or? Sasha, can you talk about that? Oh, is he here? Hello. Hi, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't okay. realize you were here. Um, believe it or not, there's actually, there's actually a lot, I can't say a lot of people, but there are patrons that from time to time are actually looking for that publication in their mailbox. Mm -hmm. So when they don't receive it, I do occasionally get a phone call around the time of when it's supposed to be out saying that um, the pro some of the problems we have in, we've had in the past which have been kind of open in this meeting is like some of the people have gotten double, some they haven't gotten it at all. So I've kind of taken up all that information and kind of matched what the carrier routes are to where their home is. I was asked for their address, you know, how long they've not been receiving it and so forth. And then I just went up to the post office, asked for the postmaster, and I told them, these are all the problematic areas. Um, how do we fix this? Okay, well, I noticed you provided a list of carrier routes. How many um, How many people would you say contacted you about not receiving them? I mean, probably not more than, like, 10 or 20 over a long period oh, okay. of time. I mean, all right. Not, like, 
because I'm still, still zeroing in on the apartments and condos where they throw them on the floor and I'm thinking, oh, well, those are the people who probably also aren't getting them. So I thought maybe you had established some carrier routes that maybe included that so I can get a better idea of where because they are. Because I sent are. my report such a long time, I don't remember if I included it in there or not, but um, there is a staff member here that I believe she lives in the unincorporated Glenview area who sent me an email that said, I don't actually remember ever receiving this. She kind of just kind of moved mm -hmm. to the area. She's only been here less than a year. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I actually got it like in my mailbox. So it wasn't like on the floor. Um, there's, I think, I think it's called Washington Commons. It's like near Washington School. Um, there's a bunch of like condos there. And um, there was actually some extra. So everyone got it in their mailbox. And there were some extras. And she actually came here and dropped them off. Because she said, you probably use it instead of cool. us tossing it. So. Um, it seemed like some positivity was happening, and the postmaster there, I have to say, on record, was I was here like what other people deal with the postmasters, and he was the nicest guy. And um, you know, I hope to continue, you know, building that relationship with him to make sure that we're on their docket of like seriously putting it in every single person's mailbox. Cool. So, okay, so so there's only about twenty, so that's not so that's nothing to do with the hundreds. No. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, any uh, communications? Of course, we have some in our packet, and you just showed us the one from the New Yorker Club. Any others than that? Mm -hmm. right. Or any liaison reports this month? Okay. The Rams meeting always lands the day after the Okay. Oh, right. Anything from last month? No. No. Okay. All right. Well, we do have a secretary's report, I think. Van, uh, yes. would you uh, like to read it into the record? Yes. A certified copy of the report of the Statement of Operations for the Miles Main District Library for the 12 months ending June 30, 2018 was filed with the Cook County Clerk on January 3, 2019 with a certificate of publication. The Statement of Operations was published in the Journal Topics and News on December 27, 2018. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go on to new business. Um, the first thing we have under new business is a motion to approve the payment to Visographic in the amount of $5,669.90 for the publication of the winter issue of Chapter 1. Do I have a motion to make that payment? Motion. Second. Okay, any discussion about that? I, I had a question. Visiographic is Chapter 1, correct? Right. Uh -huh. You know, I know we... Um, we talked about the distribution, and, and it was decided that um, you're increasing, I think, um, the times per year. But I, I just wanted to um, mention that um, we still really could use information to identify who's actually receiving this. Um, I think we're, we're distributing some 25,000. I know my last suggestion to have something printed and a card sent back was much too costly. Um, you know, um, Visiographic is about $5,600 per publication. And I was thinking um, we still really should get a handle on who's receiving this and who isn't because we may not need to be distributing $25,000. So I, I had a, another suggestion that maybe we still should ask in the uh, publication, you know, have a little um, questionnaire about if they're receiving it. And I think I mentioned, have you attended any programs in the last, I don't know, I think they're three month chapter one, in the last three months. And maybe the responses could be somehow on our website or they can go to a certain place on the website where they can just enter this information. And all you would need is their name and address. So if they're not getting it, or if they are getting it, or if they are using it, we could start to somehow figure out what 25,000 publications really mean to the library. And it wouldn't cost us any money. So um, are you envisioning that people would somehow go on our website and and and, and, and do what? I'm not really sure. Well, well the, the purpose is, we're distributing 25,000 yeah. uh -huh. chapter ones. We have no idea who's getting them. We've heard they're being left in condo buildings. We know people get them because yeah. they come to our events, but we certainly don't have 25,000 people visiting the library. But um, 
what I, I thought was we should get a better handle on who really is utilizing this. I mean, if there's an area that is so far from our library that maybe they aren't coming here, they're going to displays or somewhere else, it's valuable information. We're actually just mailing 25,000 publications, and we have no feedback as far as whose addresses are receiving these and if they're even coming here. And if they're not, maybe we need to focus on the fact they can't, they're not coming here, but they are receiving the publication. Or maybe they're not receiving it. But I think a questionnaire with those types of questions is pretty important, especially since this costs us, what, 30 grand a year? And we have no, no handle on it. Um, so you say we're, we're not sure who's getting it. I mean, we have addresses that we send it out to, Sasha, right? And go ahead. It goes by carrier route because okay. that was the cheapest. Oh, right. So right. We, we would know what sections those carrier routes are with, okay. you know what I mean, getting that information together, but not specifically like an address list. Right, right. right. he wouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. But if you had something printed inside the brochure that every resident that receives it, and ask them, we need your input, and just ask them a few questions. If they receive it, have, when was the last event you attended at the library? Or are you not receiving it? Mm -hmm. Remember, I also suggested, how about asking would they like an online copy instead? I mean, with all these younger generations that are, are loving technology, they're not all so geared up for paper. But what I'm seeing is at least come up with some questions that would be valuable enough to the purpose of, of continuing this and maybe help us to either change what we're doing or do more in certain areas. But we have no information. And I know last time it was quite costly, and I thought, well, maybe we could just set it up. They could go on the website. But um, that was just, just a thought. Just in response to one of your points, it is possible to get it online. I think uh, you can sign up to get it online, mm -hmm. as I recall. You can go on the website if you want an online. But page if we to do that, are we detract, you know, subtracting it from the 29000 No, there's no correlation. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know how we would do that. Well, because people would sign in with their name and their address. But it's by carrier routes. Route. But if it's by so carrier routes, so I forgot for a second, but then I was reminded that's how we do it. I, I don't know how we could figure out who's on uh, each route. So well, carrier perhaps routes it's something are... we can mull over. Um, I have to say, I myself, I get chapter one and I read it cover to cover, but I don't know that I would bother going online to, to do a survey. But these millennials would. Oh, to do a survey? Uh, well, I don't some know. might. Millennials would. Some mm -hmm. might. Well, you know, you need to let them know how important it is to us. Yeah. I mean, we have to take some steps. We have to be proactive. Just but that was my suggestion. I mean, just from my point of view, I don't know if we could really measure it from that because we wouldn't be getting information from everyone. Um, you'd be getting it from a, a select few, and then you say, oh, only 100 people replied. That means only 100 people got it. Like, how, how would we skew that information? Do it for a year. No, I'm just saying, it just... You, you I'm just thinking that it can only get be negative. In the end, I think it can only be negative. I mean, I would say you look at how many people come in, how many people use Hoopla, how many people use our databases, because even though they might not come in, they're using our resources and they're finding out. They have to be finding out either from the website or from Chapter 1. However they find it out, that's a Yahtzee. So you want to market in all different ways. So it's basic what we're saying is, we want to market or we don't want to market is what I think that is on the table. Oh, you know, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm not saying but, not to. Well, I'm saying justify it by getting a response. Well, I think justifying is looking at our numbers of what the usage of the library is. But why mail 25,000 copies? Because that's people how many residents and how many households we have. But that doesn't mean they're coming here. I mean, you know, you could cut that back. You could do oh, a lot of things. Know which, but the thing is, Sasha just said that it, was in, that it was in the mailboxes, that they weren't just on the... Oh, that's just a given so, sample. You have 25,000. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what a survey would be, just a given sample. But it's not your average. But you're that's my opinion. Would not, would not go that extra step. Even though I think it's not a bad idea, I'm just saying the likelihood of us getting a, a, a good response, I don't see where it would be. We could try it and see, but I I would be surprised if we get more than a hundred responses. Well, if you if you first of all, it should just be ongoing. And that's well, right. like that comment feedback thing. I mean, 
Yeah, yeah. When, I mean, I, if we, we, we could put something in the newsletter to say if you have any comments. Uh, no, we don't want comments. We want to know if they're getting it and if they're using it. Well, if they're getting it, that means that they would, they would be able yeah, to get it. Because if they're not getting a program they in the last three they months. They don't get it. They won't be able to comment. I guess what I'm trying to say is we're actually distributing 25,000 Chapter 1 um, publications every three months, and we have no idea what the result is. And I think we should try to do something, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, I just had a couple of thoughts. One is that um, you know we did do a survey, um, which was an online survey, and of course, so of course it, it did skew toward the people that read it online because it was an online survey. If it was a print survey, uh, what I have found in some of the conversations I've had, like at senior coffee hour and things like that, is you know the people that come up and say, oh, "I love this. Please don't ever get rid of it. I'm not going to go online." to say, I love chapter one because they're not comfortable on the computer in the first place. That's why they love the print version of it. So <laughs> I actually totally sympathize with your point of view. Uh, we get frustrated with that too. We would love to have much more information about who is reading it, what are they getting out of it. Uh, but I would argue that they are still all taxpayers and they have a right to know what the library is doing with their tax dollars. So. And I also, think that part is important. At least you have senior citizens who come in here and talk to you. Maybe they can just go to um, some kind of computer and just enter that information. I mean, we have to start somewhere. And I think we can't reach everybody the same way, but we can at least start. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> well, I think we can continue to try and think of ideas, but I, I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, is I'm not sure that we really think we'd get much of a response, just to be able to go online uh, and uh, I mean, say, I, I get it, I, I get the yeah. chapter one. Yeah, and um, I understand too, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it like, that would be great if we could just go online and never have to mail anything out and not have to spend that money, that would be awesome, but to be honest, like, I kind of can't wait to get the Miles Park District flyer and the Park Ridge Park District flyer and the village and the main. I mean, I read all of it. I read all of it when they come in. And I, I could get it online, but, but then I have I to print it out on my own paper, which I don't really like doing. Like, and yeah, I, like, I really I like the hard copy. I yeah. read every single one that comes in, especially yes. from the neighborhood. I don't, I so don't it, 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 it means if you online. never filled out a questionnaire online, then they would say, oh, I guess she didn't want it, so I'm not going to send it to her. Yeah, I, well, I mean, and then there would be an I don't know if there would be an assumption, but right, it just, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's great having all platforms. Do I like spending that money? No. I completely agree with you. But I don't know if we, we can make, based on a survey, to say cut it to 15000 or cut. Like, I don't know. What would be the end goal? Like, what would be the end goal of it, too? I think in a perfect world, it would work. Well, like I said, you have to have something to justify it. I, I, if I could just say oh, one thing, yeah. I, I look at the uh, uh, <clears throat> little newsletter that goes out as, as a marketing device, and it's all part of the marketing budget overall. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should provide guidance and instruction of how much the marketing budget should be, all inclusive of employees that are involved in marketing and the different types of things that are used to market from the newsletter to banners to the signs out front. And, you know, I'd say just let's try to keep the costs under control. What one thing is the best way to market? Yeah. I don't know. Um, the, yes, my only question is here. We're getting a little off the track. Well, we are. But the motion on the table is to pay a particular bill, so oh. that, that is true. Um, that's, that's correct. Um, I think we all share an interest in making sure we're um, spending the money appropriately when we're paying this much to print this many copies of Chapter 1. I think it is frustrating because you just don't know and, and can't really think of a way to measure exactly who gets it and exactly who reads it and saves it. Um, I think we can measure how many people get it online, yep. right? I mean, yeah, we know, but I mean, 
we, we, we can only just assume that people are getting it when it's taken out by the post office. And I think we just sort of have to assume that. I understand there's a concern, especially with apartment buildings, where it might not get fit into mailbox. I think that's my biggest concern. But otherwise, I think we have to assume the post office is delivering it as they should, as they're uh, required to do. Um, beyond that, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what else we can do that would truly be effective. Um, but I think you know we can discuss this again in the future. Um, you know, if anyone has any other ideas as to how to gauge how many people are getting Chapter One, um, we can certainly talk about it again. Um, but right now we do have this motion on the table to pay a particular bill, and unless there's further questions about that, um, could I have a roll call? I think we have a motion, don't we? Karen. Yes, we do. Uh, yes. Carolyn. Um, I will abstain. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, we send it out. We have to pay the bill. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Sandra. Yes. Tim. Yes. Yes. Okay. The next item under uh, new business. So Trustee Derbrick actually requested um, our next item be put on the agenda, and I think you may have a suggestion regarding public comments. And that also spurred a look at our policy, which we have before us. Uh, we have two, actually two copies. Uh, one is the current policy of 3.27, public participation and comment at a board meeting. And the other one, which is a little bit longer, is a uh, amended version, or suggested amendment, to 3.27. So, um, we have three versions. We have the current policy is what you received in your packet, and then you have oh. a clean copy of oh, I'm sorry. the sorry. version and the okay. copy with the mark. The mark that okay, copy. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Okay. All right. So, all right. So we do have several versions. So we have three versions. Well, what we have is, is, is Susan just explained the the current one is in the packet. The current one is in the packet. The long one. Uh, is the marked up version okay. that well, were uh, suggested changes, I understand, from our attorney who noticed that our policy, or rather that public comment was on our agenda and said that he we need wow. to uh, bring it up to date. Our policy needs to be brought up to date in terms of uh, some... Right, excuse me, can I just ask a question mm -hmm. for clarification because I'm getting lost. Okay. So. All of these have the same date on them. <clears throat> they all say 42011. So are you trying to say that one of the copies that we received tonight is a revision from the one in the packet because the attorney just made these changes, or are these old changes? No, these are suggested changes. I don't so Okay, so these Four changes will be made to the one I received in the packet? Okay, so the one that's in the packet is the old one. Yes, that's the current. And these are, these these are, are the, the changes to the one in the packet. And this one, the one that has the line through and the bowl, these are changes. Okay, so can I just yes. mention well, there's a problem? Let me just that's quite all right. The one in the packet. No, no it's not okay. It no, because this sense. does not reflect the one in the packet. You right. need to compare them. All right. They're Let not me, the same. Can I finish my sentence? Go right ahead. All right. So this is the one that has suggestions from our attorney, and then this other one that's a little shorter is a clean copy. Okay. So if I can just rephrase it again, All right. the copy from the attorney right. that has changes is larger in size. Than the one we received in our packet. So right. what is he taking out? It's already been taken out, or is there total confusion here? Well, see, the one with the line outs, mm -hmm. that text would be taken out. I know. Is that something that was already taken out before she gave us this? No. no. Well, then why is this shorter than this? Do you want to say what I'm saying? I don't know what the highlighted one is. That's the one that you got this your packet. This is the one in the packet, right? Okay. which is shorter so that, that than is this. Correct. So Dennis went through and he took some of that out. That is, yes, yes, that is my attorney, not Dennis the trustee. Apologies. Uh, he, he did strike some of the language that we are no longer allowed to use, and he added new language to replace it. So Which is in bold. 
it may be a little longer or shorter, I'm not sure, but this yes. this one sense. here, it should be fairly close. The, the cleaned up copy should be fairly close to So the, his new so words thing I have to be mixed all over again yes. before I can even speak about this tonight. What? I said I have to review all oh. of these copies to okay. find out what in fact is still required of us before I can even get into my agenda item. Uh, if you want to do that, you can. I mean, well, I can't sit here and make false statements. You know, I can't say, well, we're obligated to do this when in fact maybe he, he, he took it out. All right. So do you want to table this? No, absolutely not. Well, all right. All right, so it's going to take a little longer, but I will compare the short copy from today to the short copy that I highlighted when I when I um, speak about public comments. All right, well, thank you, Susan. That, at least that makes sense why it's larger and shorter. Okay, okay well, the reason I asked to put public comments mm -hmm. um, on the agenda, actually, I asked to um, my... Agenda line item was to make recommendations to public comments and to um, take a vote. It looks like we're just discussing it, which is fine. Uh, but the reason I brought it up was because for, I mean, all of us have been on this board a year, if not more. So many times we have residents come to our meetings and they um, provide public comments. And uh, there have been... Sometimes when I know residents may not share the same views we have, and it's almost as if we're mistreating them. Um, sometimes we're not as kind as we should be, but um, I'd like to see us try to make this a more hospitable environment. Who cares what they say? We're trustees, and we need to be willing to at least listen. But then the second big issue is, out of all the board meetings I go to in this area, we are one of the only boards that refuse to interact at all with the residents. Even the mayor at the village will take the time to respond to a resident who's upset about something, or he will mention that they don't have an answer to that resident's question, but he then directs someone in the administration to take care of it which I think is a great way to handle public comments. I mean, residents come here because they have genuine concerns. And as a board, we really should be able to answer their questions because we're supposed to be the knowledgeable trustees on this board. We're not just sitting here expecting to get direction from someone to tell us how to do or make decisions. So I kind of disagree with the fact that we wouldn't know how to address them. And then also, I've been at another board meeting where um, public comments are not restricted just to the beginning of the meeting. This may be a little too much for us, because I know we're not a very interactive type of board, but I've been to a board meeting where when there is an agenda item, being discussed, if the resident has a question, they raise their hand and they're recognized. So their meetings do go longer, but there is a definite, genuine interaction with the residents. And, and I, I'm asking that we try to figure out what we can do as a board to accomplish that. Now, I've also spent a great deal of time um, researching different law firms who um, have... Um, highlighted their uh, expertise with OMA. And there are some changes, and, and, and Dennis, our attorney, is correct. We are not supposed to limit the overall time of minutes. But according to OMA, you can't, you can't. No, I don't think that's what you said. No. Well, I know that I've got that from two different law firms that you mm -hmm. can't restrict the total number of minutes because every person who comes here to give public comments is entitled according to OMA. So we could certainly look into that. But then there were some other um, points that were made. Um, I think he took out the fact that you no longer have to give your address because that's um, not required. But um, what I did want to mention is I know we don't respond to the residents because it's been commented that we don't do that. But it says here 
that um, generally. Where, where are you reading, Carolyn? In the well, in the uh, number one where it says public comments, I'm talking about responding to the residents, and it says that we don't generally respond to them, but maybe the president could speak. So I'm thinking, would it hurt if we just had you as president recognize recognize whatever their question is? And then just let them know that you will have someone look into it. Maybe if it's a concern, it could be on the agenda for next um, next month. I mean, these are things that happen at all other board meetings. And I'm wondering if we could start to get into that mindset where we're yeah. actually here yeah. to work with them. Okay, okay. all right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like uh, things that you are saying, but I would like to actually look at what he has crossed out sure. and I would like to read it together so we could make final and appropriate decisions. But I think this would need a lot more than just a few minutes around the table. I think we should all talk about it, but I don't know if we can make any so decisions. Are you suggesting we vote on it next meeting? Oh, absolutely. I'd like to talk okay. about it, get your suggestions. Well, then, How then do we, we want to work start. with the residents? Well, all right, it sounds like what we need is a motion to table because motion it sounds like people want a motion. Pardon? We don't have a motion. Oh, good. good. So you can't table it. Um, okay, I don't have one yet. Good. I guess not. Okay. I guess it wasn't as fast as Then, um, <laughs> sorry. We, we can just pass it and uh, put it on next month's agenda and then everybody can. No, I would like to just. I, I mean, you've got to have input. Well, I, I don't know if everyone can discuss it if they haven't had time to read it. it right? And I would like what? to know if, what wording you want changed. Not just general, you'd like something changed. I, because the board will need to, to vote on specific wording changes. Actually, a lot of what's already in here is helpful. Because... Um, for example, last month, one of the residents wanted to give us a piece of paper and we said we couldn't take it. Well, it says right in here that you can. So I think once we read this, we'll realize that some of the things that we want to do to interact with the residents is already in our policy. Okay, sure, I would, um, I'll make, a I have specific yeah. recommendations. We did accept paper from someone. Yeah, we did. Yeah, remember we wanted to, yeah, but we, but remember we, our first response was that I can't take that from you. And even Rosansky said she wasn't sure what the procedure is. Yeah, and that's true, we aren't. So we'll learn a lot by reading this. But, I don't know, I am just, I'm kind of appalled by a few things that you've said, and I'm sorry, but that's that we're right, not right. kind to people who are here for public comment. Well, I had some never, other. I'm sorry, but if you want to say silence is not kind, I don't understand not kind. Um, that we don't listen, that we don't, that we don't sit here and say that we'll look into it. I've never had where we would say we don't look into it, or that we don't listen and are perceptive to what people have to say and and don't care about what they have to say. I don't understand that. Okay, if you check I the video, don't. there are specific individuals that came here. There was a lady several months ago. I won't mention her name because I don't want it on the video. But if you look at the videos, I mean. One of the trustees just lashed out at her. She was only trying to give public comments. Okay, and I didn't say you say we don't respond. I say we just we have them speak, and either we're looking down. Some people have a very disgusted look on their face because they're angry. I mean, we need to look around at the way we interact. We need to look at the videos. This is all accusatory. No, it's not. Look at the videos. I'm just saying we need to well, change the way that you, you, no. you cannot interpret what's going on no. inside of each of us. You said you can't say we're looking down because we're angry. You don't. You'd have to ask somebody specifically, "Are you angry?" You know, if they're angry. You could. Well, there's comments. That, you know, I'm not going to go into it, but we, we need to clean up our our response to residents. I think we need to be more welcoming, and we should at least recognize that they came here somehow, either answer their question now or plan to answer it later. Well, you just need to be a little bit nicer. So let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, I, I don't think we have any problem with doing that. I think we mm -hmm. have an occasion to answer simple questions, and I don't have any problem with directing, as we did tonight, uh, an individual to contact our director to answer questions. She, in turn, may refer that individual to a specific uh, department head or 
whatever, but uh, I don't think we have any problem doing that. And a lot of people who come aren't really asking questions. They're really giving their opinion, and right. they're not really asking for us to respond to it. They just want to give us their opinion, which is perfectly fine. That's what mm -hmm. public comment is for. So, um, Can I just ask you one thing, though? Um, I agree that things should be given to the administration, but once public comments are made at a meeting, it's part of this meeting, and I think that we all need to know how was that answered or handled. I, I kind of feel like I want to learn from that response or that process as well, so I don't want it to just disappear. Now, I feel like we should keep a record of this mm -hmm. somehow. All right. Uh, well, we can ask uh, Susan uh, to, if we get a specific question and the resident talks to her later and she gives a response, she can tell us what the response was. Uh, again, many of the commenters, commenters that we get here are expressing an opinion. Uh, yeah, they sometimes right. say, lower my taxes, or I like a particular mm -hmm. service, and they're not right. really asking mm -hmm. for a particular response. Or but, they're telling us what they don't want us to do. Right, right. or what they Which do is like, really, or whatever. We're listening. Right. right, right. And to speak for myself, when I tend to look down, it's not necessarily that I'm discussing. It's, to me, I can focus better if I'm not looking at somebody's face. Some and hear what they're notes. saying. No. That's just me. I usually take notes as they're talking, so I can review it. So can, can I, I, I think yeah. I heard yeah. that we could make a recommendation. So mm -hmm. so I, I agree there, there are people that are stating their opinions and so on, but when they're not stating opinions, so if they make a proposal, uh, I think there was one done last month when I wasn't here. Maybe there should be some follow-up to say, yeah, we, we, we heard you. We're looking at it, and here's our response. It may be a no. <laughs> mm -hmm. It may be a no, right. but at least we we somehow and, and whether or not you know uh, it, it's to to or against it uh, with what he's looking for. I think we we owe him to say or her uh, to say that you know this is where we're at, and it should However, be our, actually that last record. month that we, we person looked into that consideration and we. Well, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just yeah, I was I, reading the minutes. Proposed, I, I read the minutes. Well, we did talk about it, his proposal last meeting, and we we decided that it was not a good idea. Well, what I was going to say is that they didn't take it any further. Correct. Uh, be, well, does, I You're actually agree with that. It's not in the minutes. It's not in the minutes because. Um, what, and I was troubled by that as well because when Diane and I were working on the minutes and we're trying to put down what the people have said. I was a little troubled by the fact that I knew while Mr. Makula was presenting his his suggestion that we actually looked at all of that before we rented the spaces at Culver. We uh, have already talked to the village about whether we could make it one way down the Oakdale Court, and we asked if we could put in angled parking spaces, and they said no on all of it. So I actually knew that information, but I just feel like because we do say we don't reply to people at the time, I didn't feel like I could say anything at the time. And then there it is in the minutes that he's made this suggestion, but nobody ever got back to him, though I think Dave actually did talk to him. But I, I do yeah. take your point. Yeah. I think there's, there's, mm -hmm. the circle is not being closed. Yeah, yeah, because if it had been in the minutes that, oh, yeah, we've discussed this already, we talked with it, yeah. I would have just left it alone. I would have said, hey, sure. I'm well, glad they looked at it. Was I'm, yeah. the was, when then. they discussed this, supposedly, was when they were doing the whole re renovation of the building, wasn't right. it? Correct. It was before. Right. But Tim, Tim but and you, I were even on the board. It in you discussed it in the no, meeting. And so we was, found, no. no, supposedly that stuff had all been checked out when they were doing the renovation. And they said, no, you can't do this because of that. You can't do this because of that. And Mr. Bakula was suggesting stuff they had yeah. already been told yeah. they can't do. So, so then within the meeting, you did. You had a discussion. No, I wonder if they had no. a conversation no. afterwards. No conversation. No. 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 It was an executive yeah. session. Yeah. And oh, it was decided, it was decided okay. that it wasn't a good idea. No. What I would like to say is Susan okay. mentioned sorry. Sorry. it's yeah. already been discussed or brought to the village. Okay. I'd like to know. I mean, that's what five, eight years ago. One, yeah. whatever that recommended. We don't even know if the recommendation you brought to the village is what he brought. I'd yeah. like to see. You know, maybe 
something actually from them in writing that, that disputes it, or maybe they can give us some mm, some other suggestions. I, I think it would be nice if somebody gets back to Joe and says, you know what, this was discussed, it was looked at, and mm -hmm. you're not going to move forward on it. When, when it happened, I know one of the things yeah. that I was concerned a, about when we uh, talked about it courteous. was the fact I know for a fact there's easement issues all over the yeah. village. And that's what I think probably part of that was, yeah. was an easement. Yeah, Although okay. I wasn't on the board at that time, yeah. so I really don't know. Yeah, and that's okay. All of that's okay. If you just if, if, if it was discussed before, the scissors were made, and it didn't make sense. Yeah, it was before, like I said, before Tim and I were even So there is an issue with that, yeah. though, that very often we won't have some of these contacts. Yeah. You know, they just sign in. It's true. And they'll just give their name. Well, they don't even have to sign, really. They can just get up and talk. So, well, if it it's published in the minutes, then I think we're good. Because uh, everybody has the opportunity to see the minutes, right? So, well, they have to give their name. And maybe we should just expect them to give us something. If, if we need to respond to someone, they should be able to hand you some. So, well, you I know. think, you know, I could respond if. You, if you want a response, you have to give us some contact information. How you know, right, how right. You. Mm -hmm. uh, people generally don't have to give their address, um, but if they want a response, we're going to have to have some way to reach them, preferably a phone or an email. And, and Susan, if you do have uh, information that can be quickly conveyed to a public participant, you know, feel free to mention that. Okay. Uh, generally, we don't want to get into long discussions right. during uh, public comment. That section is reserved for people to make comment, but if there's a quick response that you can give right on the spot, I certainly don't have any objection to your doing that. And uh, I will uh, again try to remember to tell uh, people who ask questions that they can contact you later uh, to ask those questions and get a response, or I will ask them for contact information so that you can respond to them, and then let us know later on what type of response a resident might have received. All right. Can I just make one other suggestion? At yes. some of the meetings I go to, they actually have a public comment sheet that says what you need to do. Like if, if they're expecting a response, maybe it should say on there that um, they should make sure that they um, submit whatever it is with their name on it. And if we can't, add, can we not ask? For an address, or they you know, don't need they, to Yeah, there's been it. some cases lately that have said that you can't require someone to provide their address if they want to provide public comment. Certainly, individuals can give you their address if okay. they want to, okay. but you can't require an address of them in order to provide public comment. Okay. Well, I'm just thinking instead of you having to repeat this and then somebody doesn't hear it and they come in, at least if we have a little sheet with how over where the sign up sheet is. Right. We do. You know, but and then include in case you, you would like a you response. Your optional or yes. if you don't yes. response. Mm -hmm. And then say what you need from them. And then maybe that can help. Okay, all right, so we, we don't have any motion tonight regarding the amendment, so any we'll proposed amendment. Until the next week. Yeah, I think uh, I have to take okay. it home, read it over. Uh, okay. I expect it will be on our agenda next month. Okay, uh, okay. Because some of these changes we really um, should make so as to be in compliance with the law. Um, so let's, we'll talk about it more then, but um, let's move on. We don't have a motion on that right now, let's move on to the next thing. And that is a uh, discussion of board meeting video recording. Uh, Carolyn, I believe you also asked that this matter be placed on our agenda. I have a suggestion. Um, right now, our video is just one, like, three, four hour long video. And I notice that some places, they actually put breaks in the um, board meeting video by agenda line item. So if a patron or one of us is interested only in 12B, you click on 12B and it takes you directly to that section of the video. So you don't have to try to find it or sit for hours. How much of a hassle would it be to do that? Does it's anybody know? I have no idea. That's what I'm idea. saying. The, you know, talk to our techies. And yeah, but, yeah, I expect it would take some time, uh, but it's certainly something we can look into and get back to you on. It actually sounds like a good idea. 
So overall, we sent the uh, proposal or the RFP to uh, to eight firms, um, and we got five proposals back. Uh, two declined. Uh, one actually merged with another firm in the pool. Uh, so instead of sending two proposals, of course, they sent one five proposals. Um, the uh, the top two firms, uh, Lauterbach and uh, Amon and Sikic, um have uh, an extensive uh, client list in the governmental, the local governmental units of, uh, of Illinois, uh, and uh, are used by a lot of the firms. I'm sorry, by a lot of the libraries uh, in this area. Yeah. Uh, of course, the other uh, uh, the other three firms uh, have uh, library experience and local government experience, but not to the same extent. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, detail. I haven't done a lot of due diligence at this point. What my hope was to do is to give you just a quick snapshot um, of, uh, of where the firms stand. Lauterbach and Amon, uh, by far the cheapest. They're at 9,000 uh, for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, Sikic comes in second at 12 and a half. And then uh, the remaining uh, three are in the uh, 14, 5, 15 range. Uh, by comparison, uh, uh, we've been paying approximately uh, sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars. So we wind uh, up a lot cheaper, we even if we took the more expensive one. Um, yeah, well, it, I'll be enough. Um, the incumbent firm bid twenty-two hundred dollars less than than um, yeah. what they charged us this past year. Yeah. So it's worth it for us to do it one way or the other. Oh, I am a yeah, so uh, I did. Um, I did talk to uh, some of the folks at uh, Lauterbach um, Monday, and um, I asked them. I said, "Okay, so what'd you leave out? Because their you know their bid at this point looks uh, really promising." Mm -hmm. And um, they said, you know, they gave me an interesting answer. They said they really uh, tried to reduce it to a science. Or you have a team that actually goes out and does the auditing, and you have another team that takes the results of that auditing and turns it into a report. So they've specialized to a degree, mm -hmm. and um, and they're able to, you know, bring the right uh, uh, the right skills at the right time to the uh, to the job. And I suspect that would be a similar answer to you know, Sickish, for example, and maybe you know is able to uh, to another degree. Uh, in terms of uh, bench strength, you know, Sikic is uh, the largest firm um, in this in this package right here. Um, the next biggest firm, but you know, there's a pretty big gap, I, I think, uh, is Lauterbach. Um, and Lauterbach is bigger than the rema remaining uh, three uh, altogether. Um, I think Zabel and McClure might be the two smallest ones that we uh, that we have. The significance of that is, you know, the, the ability to uh, have multiple resources to bring to bear on, on any specific situation and, and so forth. Um, I'm not sure I would be comfortable with a firm the size of Sickage, but you know, for fear of being lost. In that. Oh, okay, yeah. sir. Um, but you know, Lauterbach feels like a good fit for us. So um, that's kind of where my, my head is right now. I have a number of questions that I want to pose the firms and, you know, in terms of uh, doing some due diligence. Um, what I'm hoping to get an indication of is what firms, if any, would you like to interview? Would, would you like to bring to the party and get 10 minutes to do a live and phone show and, and, uh, and then uh, perhaps you can vote next, uh, next month. Okay. Was a check, was a, can I ask a question? Sure. Was a checklist established as far as like criteria? So we want this from all of these companies, and then you know here are the things, and then there's weighted uh, responses as far as the importance level and so on and so forth. So that you know when they come back with their responses, they should have some type of uh, you know uh, you know fill in the blank. You know, I think I didn't create a rubric, no. uh, but you know the. Uh, uh, I think there were, I don't know, a dozen or, or so points of things that we asked them specifically for. Okay. I, could, I could provide that for all of you. Okay. Great. 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 Great.
Greg, my understanding <clears throat> is, I could be all wet, is that one library's audit is extremely similar to another's because they're similar businesses. It's just like government agencies, if they're used to dealing with government agencies or libraries already, wouldn't they be prepared for whatever they're going to deal with with us? Um, yes and no. Um, so if you, if you have uh, two libraries, but one is a district and one is a uh, part of a municipal uh, report, um, the audit, okay. the I audits are very different. Yeah. Uh, one has the ability to tax, and the other doesn't, mm -hmm. because their taxes are derived through the uh, municipal tax. Mm -hmm. um, if you have uh, two libraries, let's say two library districts that look, for all intents and purposes, the same from the outside, but one has debt, you know, there's very significant uh, uh, concerns around the debt and how it's being managed and how it's being paid mm -hmm. and and so on and so forth. So, you know, um, to a degree, you know, every library buys materials and loans it to the community. Um, that's generally where the um, where the similarities are. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, it could be you know it could be any number of things. Uh, I think on the spectrum, we're probably one of one of the easier jobs. You know, we don't have debt. Mm -hmm. So we don't have special considerations around that or a risk profile that's built around that. But on the other hand, we do have the ability to tax, you know, which adds a level of, of complexity, but that's more predictable, I think, than, mm -hmm. you know, than the debt service uh, piece of it. Um, but, I, okay, I'm sorry. Right, right, if you want to finish and then other people have some questions. Okay. I was just going to say, um, when you look at them and they have libraries, and you say, okay, unless you know that if they're municipal or not, and you just say, well, this library is a good size library, that's a good size library, that's what I was going at. I don't know if they're municipal libraries or not. So well, what we, what we actually did was we looked at a list of uh, library districts that were close to us. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Diane actually called around and said, tell us who your auditor is. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember if it's 20 or 25 different libraries or something like that. Mm -hmm. And she went through and she called my counterpart at each one and said, who does your audit? And, um, you know, we got a lot of uh, louder backs, we got a lot of sickages, we got, you know, uh, a few McClure's and to a lesser extent, Zabel and uh, Antique. Okay. So we know they have district experience, which go, and, and not only that, but they have experience with municipalities as well, if you look at the materials that they submit. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, what, what I'd like to do is, you know, start giving their references a call and see how the references feel about the job that they perform and, you know, whether there's any risks that they perceive in having them as, a, as an accountant. So, Greg, I'm going to let people ask some questions because maybe those are questions you'll want to pursue with the references, mm -hmm. too. Um, I have one, and then I think one or two other people have a question they'd like to ask, too. I noticed there is a report on the firm's system of quality control with respect to Brian Zabel. So I was sort of surprised to see that in these papers, sort of a negative criticism. I don't know, maybe he's required to mm -hmm. present this uh, with an I asked him for. I asked him specifically for their, uh, you know, their uh, reports on that. Okay, all right, okay. So did that give you some pause to see that uh, uh, certainly. deficiency yeah, you mentioned? Certainly. But I didn't look at it as a particular one. Okay, all right, okay. But, you know, certainly intend to talk to them uh, more about it. Okay, fine, and you asked them all the same question mm -hmm. for? Yeah, they all got exactly the same answer. Okay, all right, fine. Um, do you had your hand up? Uh, Was that within the last three years then that you asked specifically? Because I know it's a couple, or like one said in the last three years, You've had no problems or no, I don't know. Um, I asked them for their, uh, essentially, their uh, their most recent uh, peer review. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah so, I saw that and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so uh, I believe, you know, the standard length of time is, you know, is a three-year look. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So I was like, oh, I wonder if they have something in their fourth year and they're just going to tell you for three years. That's <laughs> how my mind works, right? Okay. Um, Are you done, Lulu? But, well, no, I just wanted to just point out, um, do, you, do you want us to say who we like or we don't? We're not even going to go there. Uh, I mean, you could say, but I, I, don't, I don't know that we're ready to decide okay. tonight. Right. But you can say who you like. I mean, that's well, you. Um, I just really like the way that um, Waterbuck and... Amen. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. um, Amen. Um, I like the way that they created their pricing. I love that they used their manager and in charge. Mm -hmm. That ones are the lower rate, and that's why their rate is. Uh, I'm on page 20 of their bid, and that's why their rate is so much lower because they utilize the people with that lower rate, and the partners only are there for those critical 16 hours, mm -hmm. and that's why that rate is higher. I mean, I love that they create their um, their guidelines or their mm -hmm. um, scale like that, and I think that's um, it's really a great approach. Um, also, there I thought their audit team looked great. I thought that their pricing is twenty thousand dollars less, um, and their extensive list of libraries is I, I was actually very impressed by that. Just to be honest, I. That was one thing I was looking for to see who they have. And I was a little bit confused because I said, the other libraries serve yeah. with the D? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. is that the past? But then it says here, LA stands by our quality and service. As such, we occur, blah, 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 that we serve. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, are you serving? Have you served? What are you? <laughs> what does yeah, I, think I think you probably use them interchangeably. Yeah. Right, and yeah. I was like, okay, you know, all right, I won't, I won't get hung up on that. But, um, yeah, just from our area, I and mean, this is everyone in our area. Right. I mean, this is any library that I can think of, except for a couple. I don't see Benson in here. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, like a handful that I don't see. Uh, but, right, a, a handful, but wow. So I'm just saying, pretty impressed with their price and with their, in their packet. So, Greg, you said that you um, want to make some calls yet, and you're not ready to make a final recommendation. And mm -hmm. it, is that correct? Yeah. And you, you'll have that done by next month, you expect? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. I think the other question we have is whether or not we want to interview any of these firms at all, and if so, which ones? Um, and I'm going to just you know, give everyone a chance to express their opinion on that. And I'm just going to throw out my opinion first, just because I am. And um, that is, uh, I'm, I'm not an accountant, and I'm not sure exactly what intelligent questions I would have to ask. I'm not really sure that I would get more information in person than I would by reviewing the documents here. Um, I don't want to... Uh, you know, just have them come in for no good reason. I mean, I don't want to waste their time or our time. Uh, so I, I'm not sure it would be productive, but other people may have other opinions. So as I go around the table, I'd like your opinion on whether or not you want to personally interview someone from the firm, and if so, which firms you want to interview. Maybe we, maybe we want to inter all, all, interview all five. Maybe if you're not really serious about one or two of them, you know, just tell me which ones you do think you would want to interview if we did interview. So, yes. And let me say a couple of words first. Oh, is that going to be part of the process that we would violate if we no. don't interview? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No, you don't, I mean, I mean, really, you don't have to interview any of them. You, have, you can interview all of them. You, uh -huh. you know, you can do uh, phone screens or whatever, uh, break it into a commit. I mean, whatever uh, process you want to follow is, uh, is up to the board. <laughs> But at the end of the day, who, whoever you're hiring is really somebody who's going to report to you on whether the financial uh, health of the library is is uh, appropriate. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Yeah. So it's not it's not as it's not as much about whether I'm comfortable with them. It's more about if if you're comfortable with them. And Thank you for reminding us of that. That, that is a good point. Yeah. So I, I think you know I think a personal meeting is important. Okay. Um, and however you want to do that, that's you know uh, this this fine. I'll make whatever you need to happen happen. So what? 
uh, help me better understand uh, the need for my comfort level in, in working with this. Is it from a personal interaction with them? Think and run. Pardon? Think and run. Okay. Uh, the uh, CFO at Enron used to work at Arthur Anderson. Okay. Arthur Anderson was the auditing firm of Enron. And the CFO of Enron would exert influence over the uh, auditing firm to make sure that whatever he was reporting, they signed off on. Yeah, way, way too much, way too much <laughs> information words, for me. I have no clue. And, 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 and hence, I would, I would appreciate some type of a matrix of what you guys required. Did they all meet it? What are the pluses and my top three pluses and minuses of each one? And, and and I think that better helps us because think Enron. Like you know, I don't I don't pay attention to that. I have no what you just said is great information. I, I'm I'm glad you know it, but I, I have no clue on it. And I certainly wouldn't have any clue on on influence. You're buying an apartment building. Okay. From me. Okay. Diane is the inspector. Yeah. My best friend. <laughs> Would you? Be would aware. you? Yeah, I mean. Oh, absolutely. Are we going to clean? Well, it? but my, my point is, my point is, is I want this. This is your hire. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, so you have to have a feel as to whether these people are going to uh, uh, work more on your side than on my side, and you need them to work more on your side to give you a comfort level that. There is a third independent party that's yeah, well, looking at the books and records of the library. Yeah, but yeah, we, right. we provided no criteria for that went out in the RFP that I that I know of. So, uh, you know, I'll provide that to you. Okay. And, and yeah. can I just uh, reinforce, Greg? Do you know any of the people at any of these agencies? Are any of them your brother-in-law or anything? Where's the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> I just he was joking, but I just wanted to make it clear. Well, he does not have for any maybe not. Yet. Yet. Lady, but maybe you just know of them or their reputations just from being. I, I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, except for my experience with both McClure and Sarah, I don't oh. know anybody below the firm name at any of these places. Oh, okay. Well, then we can't use any of that. Help. All right. <laughs> the um, audits are public. Yeah. Information. Um, so As a matter of fact, they're on the uh, uh, website uh -huh. under FOIA and transparency. Okay. Because I. Um, I mean, all, all I've ever experienced is our current auditor and their report. So I guess I would like to see a, a report from a similar size oh. library just to see what their report. I mean, if, if, if I, I look through that one and I can't understand anything, then you feel the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, other than that, though, I kind of agree with Karen that I, I, I really wouldn't know what questions to ask them. Um, well, you know, Because yeah. we don't really. The only thing we ever deal with is the report that the, the auditor gives us at the, mm -hmm. the meeting. Right, it did mm -hmm. show that there was a little bit more interaction. <coughs> they do have questions, that they do work for us, and that they would have some um, kind of Q&As or some type of, um, I don't know, little, I don't know, I don't know what word it is. But anyway, gatherings or something, if you have questions for them or they were open to us contacting them for whatever reason. I don't know, it just seemed a little um, more collaborative. Mm -hmm. Was that in the criteria that they do that? That they want? I don't know. That, 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 that they, they would provide that type of service? I don't know, but it showed that in their proposal. Uh, uh, the, in the uh, one you suggested? The auditing standards require them to uh, communicate with, uh, with the audit stakeholders. You guys? Right. Um, and uh, and make a report, um, but you know again, you know you have to have uh, you have to have a, a feel as to the level of scrutiny and and confidence that they would surface everything that's important. The person that they and I'll, I'll just throw this out to the person who would come to our meeting to talk to us might never have anything else to do with the library after that. I mean, it's quite possible right, they have the audit. Right, might not right. be the auditor. Might just be a yeah, person. Possibly, but I, I think, you know, they would, you know, send send it. It. Their yeah. best dog and pony guy. Yeah, right. That's what I mean, right? I mean, that might not be the best auditor. Yeah. Might just be Does he person. do this option? Huh? 
One thing that I noticed um, when I was looking over the material, this louder bar um, provides free of charge um, educational opportunities for the library and for its constituents. So I thought that was something. And I think Sickich does it in two, but I don't know if they charge for it or not. And I have a question about McClure. Is there any reason why we're not going to use them? I know we haven't decided, but is it only because of the rotation? Uh, uh, the rotation is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, we've never had a uh, disagreement, you know, where they said, I think you ought to record this. And I just dug in and said, no, we're not going to. Um, I've expressed my disappointment at some of the things that we've uh, recorded, like the uh, OPEP uh, liability um, and the financials. But, um, you know, uh, they've been professional and they've been, you know, very good in terms of uh, responding to whatever our needs are. Mm -hmm. um, they are a small firm, though. You know, so, you know, they, you know, a lot of times small firms have small firm uh, perspectives. If you go with a larger firm, you have a, you know, a larger firm perspective and more resources. Maybe people that sit around and think more instead of going out and charging clients in terms of uh, what the literature means and how to interpret it and you know, what attitudes and so forth they have. Yeah, it looks as if, after looking through all the information, that many of the libraries really do rotate mm -hmm. quite a bit. And we had them for 26 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, but I, I, I think that's the reason, the main reason yeah, I decided yeah. to go out. But although I have to say, now that we've done so, I'm sort of glad yeah. because I see that we're probably going to be able to save some money. Mm -hmm. by sure. doing <coughs> so. That wasn't the original reason for doing so, but this is sort of a uh, good benefit of doing so. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I expected to save some, you know, some money on it, uh -huh. um, but uh, no one here yeah. the lot of active. Right. I mean, even if we went with McClure, uh, we'd still save some money because they've lowered the amount that they have been charging us in the past. So, so but in any event, I think let's let's get back to the question that we were uh, addressing, and that is, uh, do you want to interview some firms, and if so, which ones? So, uh, Dan, I'm going to start with you. Well. I'm interested in Lauterbach and also Sickich. I like their both of their packets and what they have to offer, but I mean I wouldn't know what to ask them either. Mm -hmm. But well, I would like to think of some questions in the meantime. Let's see what their presentation is all about. That might help me decide which one is more personable. It's number one and two firms anyway, you said, as far as Right. How about you, Patty? What do you want to do? I definitely would not feel comfortable knowing what to ask either, except, I, you know, I go according to what Greg says, yeah, these questions were answered this way, blah, 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 and whatever the paperwork is. Otherwise, I don't know. But yes, those are the two firms that I personally thought are worth investigating. All right, Carolyn? Um, I had one question. Um, I recall with McClure and Sarah that when we first um, entered into the IMRF pension that they had increased our um, audit costs. And then this year, I believe, they increased it again because she claimed there's a lot of work that needs to be done with this IMRF pension. Is it Judy? Is it? Is it yes. Okay. So I was wondering, um, you know, I, I just skimmed through this. I'll be honest with you. I saw it in my mailbox Tuesday morning, so it must come after my mail person, so I missed it. But I noticed they just say, like, somebody says all auditing services, and it gives a total amount. But I thought IMRF was, like, considered almost an additional cost. So would that be included in this, or are we going to find out later it's this plus the IMRF cost? So well, that's we, one of the uh, questions that I started asking. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, what I've uh, found starting with Lauterbach is, is that it's all in any changes of, in uh, uh, 
new accounting pronouncements as they apply to us have already been considered over the three year horizon and it's already been priced in. What Judy, uh, what Judy did uh, when we adapted IMRF was to price separately some additional audit procedures around the adoption of IMRF. And then following that, um, uh, we had a new accounting pronouncement, the SB 75, which tries to capture, um, which tries to capture a liability that that the, li uh, that the library at some point may pay or may never pay, mm -hmm. uh, having to do with you know one of the plans uh, IMRF, actually the Illinois state law vis the IMRF has in place. So. Um, uh, you know, uh, because we implemented in that particular, last year, uh, part this particular uh, uh, pronouncement, uh, there was some extra work in terms of creating the footnote for the first time and things of that nature. Um, and that's what the extra charge was for that. Um, so um, I wasn't, you know, particularly pleased by it. Um, you know, I would have, I would have liked, uh, you know, especially with the RFP and the horizon, I would have liked this to be a little more stable. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Um, yeah. uh, but this is, you know, this was the route that, uh, this was the route that they chose. And, you know, the assurances that I had from Rotterbox so far is, you know, that's not the way that they operate. They try okay. to price everything in. Now, if, having said that, if we go out and I don't know, do something big, okay? What, however you define that, or maybe we have to borrow money, or or, or maybe we have to, you know, uh, you know, do some big construction project that they're not aware of at this point. They will have the opportunity to say, oh wow, you know, that's a lot more work than what we signed up for, okay. and then they probably, you know, then they negotiate it. Okay. Um, but I don't see anything like that really on the horizon. Oh no, that's fine. IMRF was costly to us for her to process or whatever the term is. I just wanted to make sure that's part of you said you had a matrix. So that's good to know. All right. And then in terms of um, I think there's actually there are only four new um, auditing firms. Mm -hmm. I would like to see all of them come in. Um, it's not as much what questions we would ask them, but their presentation usually says quite a bit about a company. Um, we've had presentations before for, are they consultants that we were trying to hire? And it is amazing how different things are. So, um, and, and I don't think their presentations would be that long. Did you say 10 minutes, Craig, or did I? That's, you know, uh, that's what I'm tossing out there. Okay, I mean, uh, it won't be like an hour. hour. Well, uh, five firms times ten minutes is fifty minutes. No, so but I meant per person. So. If you don't, and if you have questions, it'll be longer. All right. Well, I think to have four firms come out and present um, isn't out of the you know isn't atrocious. I think it's something we should just. Um, I would like to. You would have to have five. I, I think you need all five. I, I don't know how you could not have. Well, McClure and Sarah. I don't know if they need to come out. I mean. It, but that we're excluding them. I mean, since they we've had them for 26 years, it's up to you. I mean, now, when it comes to mine, I'll, I'll follow up. Sorry, okay, you know. all right, uh, all right. I'll do. Okay, yeah. so Linda, that was it. Okay, um, honestly, I just uh, looking at the proposals again, I just don't see anyone who has the library experience that Waterback has. I mean, I'm looking at Sickich, I'm looking at Zabel. They just have a handful of libraries that they've done. Mm -hmm. And not that I should pin that against them, but I think for experience and being able to have the well-rounded, of knowing all different types of libraries and experiences and tragedies versus triumph and whatever it is, I'm just, and with the price, I don't know. I'm fine with interviewing them, but I'm, I don't know. Um, even if we just want one year, just to try them out, not even do a three year. Just do a one year, see how it goes, and then go three years if you want. I don't know. But 
I'm glad we're at the point where we're, we've got uh, five responses back. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, being able to pull everything out, uh, I, I still would rely uh, heavily on what was requested in the RFP. How did they respond? How did it, does that compare to each one? I would suggest trying to limit it down to two or three people, you know, two or three groups to have them come in. Uh, my skill sets for, you know, uh, picking through these guys is, is uh, it's not there. And, and, and when I would work on uh, large-scale projects, uh, we, we did that RFP where we ranked and, and, and stacked how they responded, so it helped us to bring it down to two or three people that we were, two or three companies that we were going to bring in. Uh, you know, I, I think Greg has uh, the expertise along with <coughs> whoever else helped pull the RFP together. Uh, I think they have a much better uh, opportunity for providing us with that information and down selecting to the top two or three. Okay. Uh, I, I agree with Dennis. I think we only need to talk to the group. I, I, I agree with um, Linda and the uh, Lauterbeck here. Um, Greg, on page 13 of the Lauterbeck proposal, it gives some hours. Are those, um, do those hours seem reasonable as to what you, you work with? Oh, yeah. I, I saw this. Uh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have this. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, and and I, um, I think we should have them come in, I, but I stand, to stand by my, I probably wouldn't be able to ask them much. But if we did have an issue with them later on, uh, I'd hate for somebody to say, well, you didn't even have, you didn't even talk to them, you, you never even met them. Uh, you know, and I think that yeah, would be part of our due diligence as a board to actually see a representative. So I would like to, I kind of changed my mind after no, we discussed you it. Yeah. You can change your mind. <laughs> so, so uh, well, but I don't think we, I, I don't think we need to decide these right so I, I for sure don't think we need the people we've been using all along, because I don't see what they've been saying different right. to what they've been doing. So, uh, so I understand, um, it, it seems like I've heard everything from don't interview anyone to interview everyone, but I, I think what I heard the most is interview two or three of them and that we would want to talk to at least people that we think there's some chance that we might actually hire. So we want to see them in person. After all, as, as Greg reminded us, this firm reports to us. They, they do not report to Greg. They do not report to Susan. They certainly need to talk with them and work with them, but they actually are our employees, our contract, not our employees, but our, they're our contract, we contract with them. They work for us. And I think it probably is a good idea to meet whoever it is that we're going to hire. So uh, in terms of who it's realistic that we're going to hire, um, I certainly hear a lot of support for Lauterbeck and maybe some for Sickage. Uh, those are the two lowest bidders. Uh, McClure, actually, we've already, we already know, of course. Um, I don't know that I've heard much support for Zabel or, Kra or uh, Teague, Teague Crescent Ore. Um, if, it's, if it seems very unlikely that we want hire them, uh, I don't know if we want to waste their time or ours. Um, I, I do want to ask, would, would most people be comfortable with bringing in the two lowest bidders to interview? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I, if I get off on my opinion, yeah. I, I, I think uh, Greg and whoever helped pull the RFP together should be able to make a recommendation for us. She should be able to say, hey, these top two or three people out of this field of five hit the marks on all of these questions that we want. And these other two didn't hit it. Now, if price happens to be a key requirement that you wanted to put forward, then terrific. You know, you get what you pay for. I'm not saying that just because they're low, they should be excluded. But I think Greg and or, and again, I'm not sure who pulled together the RFP, uh, 
I think he's going to have the, the most expertise if they know to help put forward the responses from the RFPs and, and who we should bring in. That, that's just my opinion. Yeah, so no, I'm I understand. Sorry. Yeah, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to you know, say any more than that. That's just my opinion. So, so whether or not I, I think we should have the lowest people in there, uh, it, it's, it's immaterial as far as I'm concerned. Well, well, Dennis, I think we absolutely are going to hear more from Greg after mm -hmm. he does uh, his reference call. Yeah. And, and we are going to get a recommendation from Greg at the next meeting in addition to interviewing the two lowest bidders. And, and I would go as far to say is if Greg said, oh my gosh, you won't believe what I found out, the two lowest bidders, they're, they're both horrible after all, I would not rule out saying, okay, we're going to interview number three and number four now. Okay, um, so uh, I am just hearing where we are right now. Okay, okay. We're, we, it sounds like we appear to be the most interested in the two lowest bidders and we'll interview them and if we come to the next meeting and get some information which makes us think no we want to go with number three or number four that doesn't prevent us from interviewing someone else either um, there's not a big spread there, so just, uh, yeah. is uh would everyone be comfortable with that mm -hmm. so what is, is that going to work out for uh Demonstration yeah. in terms of bringing in two firms at the next meeting. You'll invite them to come in, and we'll put that at the beginning of our agenda for our February meeting. Okay. All right. And should Greg find any information that I mean, you feel that one should be ruled out? Then we yeah. Oh, that right. Email. Certainly, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. So, all right. I don't think we make any particular decisions tonight that need a vote. I think we just have a consensus as to how many we're going to interview, but we're not actually I think required to hold on anything tonight. So, um, all right, turning to unfinished business. I don't know that we have any. Uh, are there any other matters? Um, yes. I was just past that. Um, I pass that out it, in the context of the, the public comment, because it just came out this morning. It's a newsletter that comes out every day from the other legal, library legal firm. And I thought the last set paragraph of it was quite interesting. It was to do with what Carol was talking about, about having a total number of minutes devoted to public comment. And what it says is you can't cut off somebody's public comment. Um, the total amount, you can't set a total amount of time for public comments if you don't already have that in your policy. So any restriction that you want to put on public comments has to be recorded in the policy. So I just thought you might be interested in, and uh, that's actually a really excellent source of information on library law. So if you want to sign up for it yourself, you might be interested. Okay, so I think so. I think, I think we do. Okay. So then I'm going to use you. Um, so I just want to remind uh, everyone at your next meeting, at our next meeting, please, please bring these packets that we got tonight so you don't have to copy them all over again. Bring them next meeting. And probably be a good idea to bring those different versions of the Open Meeting Act to, to refer to at our next meeting also. Okay, so um, hearing no other people. Just, before you adjourn, just quickly, mm -hmm. what are we putting on the agenda next month from today? Well, uh, the change, the uh, Open Meeting Act uh, okay, the changes to our comment. okay policy, All right. and uh, of course the uh, interviews of the two audit firms, and uh, probably voting on which audit firm we're going to choose. I imagine we'll okay. do that <coughs> next month. Okay, and um, we'll probably get some follow up on um, the. Um, Board meeting minute video. Board meeting video. Oh, whether we can put the if it's breaks in it. or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll probably get some information. All right. By thank you. next meeting. All right. Okay. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Danny yes. is our movement. Second. Second by Danny. Uh, Danny, want to take the roll? Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. 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 Yes.